thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. It's, it's massively appreciated you taking your time out of your busy day to uh, to listen to what we've got to say. So we do appreciate that. So thanks to Krishna uh, for joining. Krishna's our CEO and, and, and founder. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a bit of an intro on the call and just give you a little bit of background and then we'll move into uh, Krishna's presentation. Um, we like to keep these things as interactive as we can. So, um, you know, by all means, put any questions in the chat and, uh, and we'll pick those up as we can or We'll make sure that they're answered at the end. So really appreciate that. Everyone that's joined as a participant, um, you guys should have joined on mute. So uh, yeah, just, just just pop the questions in the chat and we'll pick those up. So thank you for that. Um, just just as a means of introduction, then um, what I want to do is just just kind of think about um, how we you know, we we think constantly around our messaging and how we put, how we speak to our customers and how we can kind of get our message across and. We have a, a whole load of really compelling factors built into our comprise technology that we want to try and get across to all of you guys. But just as, as we think about specific things that we could potentially talk about, you know, we, we look at things such as data management, total cost of ownership of your storage assets, straight the insight into some particularly costly areas of your data center infrastructure that can potentially break your budgets and how to deal with things like exponential growth. It, it, it's a constant challenge that you, know, you guys are constantly um, being challenged with within your businesses and hopefully um, you know we see this in, in many places across our customer base so we're, we're pretty sure we can help you with, with things along those lines but as we think back into kind of 2020 and it's been a huge learning curve for all of us for, for all the reasons that we all know all of our economies are struggling um, due to COVID and, and obviously there's sadly there's a lot, a lot of people lost their lives due to what's happening in the world right now um, businesses have had to adapt particularly rapidly certainly in terms of changing infrastructures um you know, there's, there's a, a relative ubiquitous kind of work from home policy pretty much everywhere in the world you know krishna and i are both working from home today in, 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 our, in our home offices um that's created a huge strain on it departments right across the world being able to adapt to such you know, massive shifts in, in user behavior is, is proving very very difficult to manage um, you know, budgets are not exactly adapting fast enough to deal with that. So, again, you know, this is something that we think we can certainly help with in terms of how you're dealing with your data storage and, you know, the, 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 the requirements for data storage has changed quite dramatically, certainly in the last six to nine months in every customer that I speak to. So, again, you know, that's something that, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll certainly touch upon as we, as we move through this deck and Krishna will sort of highlight where specifically we can help with that, certainly around the sort of cloud elements and the, and, the, and the new technology that we've brought forward in Comprise. Um, so traditional sort of transitioning to this new norm, I, I found certainly speaking to customers, I'll, I'll speak to four or five customers every day and, it, and it's the biggest challenge. It's the biggest challenge that's highlighted for everybody we speak to. So that, that transition into how do we deal with the changing landscape is just a real genuine problem. We tend to find a lack of insight into what's already there is a real problem. So if you don't have a great insight into what you have right now, how can you really architect the strategy that was gonna cope certainly in the short to medium term, looking out at the next year and the year after and how businesses might adapt and how can IT actually match that? So we think we've got a great solution for that. We know we've got a great solution for that. We've got some great customer recognition for it. So again, this is something that we're gonna to touch upon as we move through. Some of the predictions we try to make at the beginning of the year, and we all do as businesses, we have to, and this is something that's on Krishna's mind every day, I'm sure, um, is, is, is some of the shifts from kind of data centers out the cloud to the edge, you know, that's, that, that, that's happened at a pace that no one could have predicted at the beginning of the year, I don't think. It, it's gone absolutely crazy. So uh, again, some of those things that, you know, the, the adaptation of, of IT to match that is, is, is being quite difficult. Certainly, uh, I spend a lot of my time speaking to UK-based customers and you know, budgets are either frozen or have been reduced dramatically. And again, how do you, how do you kind of get more for less? How can, you, how can you adapt in order to still maintain and deliver a service to your users in, in the current situation? Obviously, we're hoping that this current situation is going to improve as, as, as vaccines become available, certainly beginning of next year by the looks of things. Just being prepared for that, and hopefully we can help you there. So, yeah, in so, fact, uh, some of the companies making the vaccines are our customers, Kevin. So that, that's a great know. point, Krishna. They are indeed, yeah, absolutely, which we're very proud of. So yeah, absolutely. 
Um, but before I pass over to Krishna, um, just make sure that everyone, everyone's on mute. So, uh, yeah, please put some, some questions in the chat. And uh, we'll monitor these as we go on. And then obviously we'll make sure we get those answered by the end of the session. So no further ado, I'm just going to pass over to Krishna. Perfect. Thanks, Kevin. Um, and we'll make this very interactive, as Kevin said. So feel free as we go along, any questions you have to ask. And we're going to do a live demo so um, we can um, address any questions or uh, clarifications you have uh, along the way. Uh, but as Kevin said, uh, we're definitely seeing a big shift in our customers uh, towards more uh, cloud adoption, especially many customers now are actually looking at a mix of more than one cloud. Um, and as multi-cloud becomes the new norm, uh, there's two things that are front and center for most companies. Um, and those are, you know, how do you optimize the cost of, of your storage in the cloud? And how do you move more data to the cloud faster? Because we all know it's not easy to move a lot of data. Um, and the cost piece is interesting because um, even though the public clouds have a lot of cost saving capabilities, uh, and if this week, if you're uh, listening to any of the sessions from Amazon at AWS reInvent, Amazon is a, a strong partner for us. Um, you'll see that Amazon has a lot of uh, good capabilities around new uh, tiers of EBS storage and uh, new intelligent tiering for their S3 classes. And all these cost savings um, features are really excellent. But despite all these capabilities, Gartner predicts that 80% of enterprises are going to overspend on their cloud budgets. And the reason for this is what Kevin mentioned early on. Um, the reason most companies are overspending on cloud uh, is because it is very hard to get visibility into what's actually happening with your data you know, in the cloud. And we're going to touch on that today. I'm going to show you how you can improve visibility into your data and how you can start by knowing what you have, knowing how it's growing before you have to make uh, costly decisions. The second thing we uh, 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 see is that when you're looking at your spend in the cloud, uh, compute is certainly a big part of that spend, but the second largest area of spend is storage. Most companies, 30% or more of their cloud spend is in storage, and over time, that number is growing because once you put data, the data doesn't go anywhere. It's sitting in the cloud, and it's continuing to consume resources so over time, the data buildup means that data starts costing more than even compute. Um, Kevin, I know you've been talking to lots of customers uh, who are looking both at the hybrid cloud and what data to move to the cloud, and are looking at their cloud costs itself. Uh, do you want to shed any light or comments, or particularly you know what you're seeing in EMEA with customers? Yeah, absolutely, Krishna. Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, Certainly, when, when when we do some types of analysis with potential customers and existing customers, if you, if you if you look at some of the cost profiles, you know, storing large data sets out in the cloud is, is can be particularly problematic. Certainly for for two or three customers that spring to mind, um, and it, it's kind of like the major issue we tend to see is that customers will send an entire workload to the cloud as opposed to send maybe a, a cold subset of that data to the cloud. Um, obviously incurring egress costs because there's a hell of a lot of, 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 of hot data on there. So bringing back that, that hot data on a regular basis is obviously going to incur costs, which potentially breaks the, 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 the cost and business model that they'd put forward in the first place to justify that spend. So I guess you know, what, one, of the, one of the interesting parts of, of where we are right now, certainly with customers in EMEA, is how can we um, provide some detailed insight into ensuring that customers send the correct data to the cloud. I think I think that's the the hottest topic for us right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, when you send data to the cloud, um, cloud data migrations are also an interesting um, item that comes up, especially when you're dealing with unstructured data. You know, uh, all of you know this, but file and object data. Uh, is very um, voluminous 
you could easily have petabytes of data. A petabyte is roughly two to three billion files. So when you're trying to move petabytes of data to the cloud, uh, those migrations can get very difficult if you're just trying to do it through tools like Robocopy or RSync or manually manage that whole process. Um, and that's where a good data management solution that gives you visibility into all of your data, it helps you move the right data at the right time in the right way that you want to, uh, and helps you manage the data across any NAS, any cloud that you have, uh, is, is really helpful. Um, and so in today's presentation, we're really going to cover these seven reasons why cloud data management becomes difficult for companies and how we can help you overcome them. So we're going to show you how you can take a process that's usually complex and ad hoc and make it more systematic uh, and predictable. Uh, we're going to show you how you can manage data across your multiple silos, whether it's NAS or clouds. We're going to show you, as Kevin mentioned, because in the cloud you have a variety of costs. You have storage costs, retrieval costs, uh, access costs. We're going to show you how you can pick the right cloud storage options for your data at the right time. Uh, and we're going to show you how you can make it systematic to manage data so you don't have to babysit every data migration and you don't have to manage cold data on a daily basis. We're going to show you how you can do this continuously through policies. And we're going to show you how you can do all of this without changing the experience for your users. The users don't have to know that now they have to go find data on a, in a cloud or now they have to go somewhere else to look for their data. I'm going to show you how you can make it transparent for them and make the whole process streamlined uh, with visibility. So those are the things we're going to cover. Kevin, I don't know if you wanted to add anything uh, at this point. Yes, yeah, certainly. So, um, yeah, I, I, when I look at this slide and when we kind of talk through these use cases, Krishna, you know, particularly with, with, with customers that we've not engaged with before. You know, we, we hear examples of, of various different things. But if I kind of hark back to my selling storage days back in the day, maybe sort of three, four years ago, you know, the examples that we see certainly around um, lack of control seems to be quite an interesting point where, you know, centralized IT has maybe potentially in some instance lost control of, of, of usage of cloud, which obviously can, can have some fairly uh, interesting side effects. You know, we've seen lots of test dev instances being spun up and people potentially expensing that as opposed to going through some sort of central procurement. You know, people just generally just doing their own thing, really, as opposed to uh, being under the umbrella of centralized IT. Um, you know, we've seen stuff where sort of customers have just generally dipped their toe into the market of cloud, not necessarily had a sort of real co cohesive co sort of coherent strategy as they would normally do in, in a centralized IT environment, you know, kind of box ticking exercise, I suppose. Um, and this kind of customers who've just gone whole hog and just basically thrown a whole load of stuff at the cloud with not necessarily a strategy. So I think it's sort of what we see generally is just that kind of potentially lack of control or not necessarily the depth of planning that will be put into to, a, to an on-premises infrastructure. So again, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll, we can help with that, and that's what this presentation is for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the three things that we're going to really focus on today are, first, how do you start with visibility? How do you know what data you have, how users are using it, how it's growing, how much it's costing? How can you get all that analytics up front before you buy more storage or more backup or before you decide how much to move to the cloud, you know, how can you lead with that insight and knowledge? That's the first thing we're going to show you. The second thing we're going to focus on is once you know, how can you move data at speed with reliability and efficiency? And so we're going to show you different use cases around moving data from data migration to data archiving and data replication. And then the most important thing is you could move data in different ways. You know, you may get insight into data in different ways. And how do you do it in such a way that 
you don't end up creating another silo of your data. Now, how do you take control of your, of, the, of your data? How do you make sure that no matter which cloud your data is in, no matter what storage you moved your data to, no matter what backup you're using, your users have full access to that data at all times. You're able to make more moves on that data because we know data is always what right data, right place, right time. So we know that wherever your data is sitting today, tomorrow there may be a better place for that data. So how do you take control? How do you make sure that the data that you have is not locked into a proprietary file system, but you have full access to it. Uh, so we're gonna really cover these three items uh, through the demo. So a little bit about Comprise. Um, it, we are a data management software uh, company. We uh, are headquartered in Silicon Valley. That's where I am based. Uh, Kevin's based in the UK. Uh, we are a global company, so we have uh, folks around the globe. Um, and we really created Comprise for today's modern scale of data uh, because uh, the rate at which data is growing, and most of you are probably aware of this, um, you're today dealing with billions and billions of files, billions of objects, multiple clouds, multiple data silos, and managing all that data requires a very different way of thinking from the storage-centric thinking that we're used to. So Comprise is purely software. It works across all your storage, uh, and it's designed to manage your scale of data. Uh, we recently, Giga Ohm picked us as a leader in unstructured data management. Uh, that's what a lot of the analysts are calling this category, uh, unstructured data management software, and that's where we fit. So what can we do for you? Well, when it comes to your on-premise data, if you have data sitting in file servers, whether it's NetApp file servers or Dell EMC servers or Windows servers or even just basic Linux servers, you can use Comprise uh, to actually look at all that data and to manage that data for you. Uh, and setting up Comprise is really simple. Uh, it just runs as one or more virtual machines that we call observers in your environment. So let's say after this presentation, if you wanted to engage with us, uh, if you reach out to Kevin and his team, um, we can uh, get you set up with an assessment. And basically all it would require is for you to bring up a comprised virtual machine in your environment that would get connected to our director, which I'm gonna show you a live demo of in a second. And then you would be able to just point at all your storage and start looking at all your data. And we'll give you a lot of analytics on that data, all of which I'm gonna cover uh, in, in a minute here. Uh, but this whole approach of knowing your data first and then moving it intelligently um, is not limited only to file storage. We can do the same thing for any of your data in public clouds. So Comprise actually gives you a single consistent way to look at both your file and your object data, regardless of where it lives. That data could be sitting in a cloud file server, it could be sitting on an on-premise file server, it could be on an on-premise object store, it could be in a cloud object, you know, in a cloud, in an S3 bucket, and across all of this, we will give you visibility. And I'm gonna show you both visibility into file stores and the cloud uh, in the demo uh, here shortly. Uh, but uh, along with that visibility, we can also move and manage your data. Uh, so we can move your data across your file servers, your private and your public clouds, and we support all the different common use cases for moving data. We can transparently archive cold data, uh, we can migrate data, uh, replicate data, and everything that we move is kept in native format. So all the data that we move, you can fully access it from the cloud without using Comprise and without using your original file system. So it's, it's not only transparent from your original source, but it's also native access. Um, and you can search and find the data anywhere. Kevin, did you wanna add anything before we go into the demo? Yes, and Kristen, just, just a couple of, of, of customer examples here. So 
some projects that, that, that we've, well, one we've completed, one we're in the process of working through. So, you know, we've one particular example of a large manufacturing customer who um, had a quite a large legacy footprint of storage. Um, he'd realised that it was it was ageing and it was it was it was it was kind of past its best use really. And it was a case of how how does he modernise his data centre? His initial plan was to basically move everything lock, stock, and barrel over to a, a new bunch of all flash arrays. Um, obviously, there was a there was a specific cost attributed to that. Um, hadn't done any analysis. It was just basically move everything like for like, but to sort of some newer technology. Um, we were engaged. We we did our initial analysis piece, went through that, and basically showed the customer that um, just just under seventy percent of that date that hadn't been accessed within the last twelve months. So you know, that that was an, an ideal candidate to 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 move to the cloud, um, which 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 he subsequently did. But the whole point of that was, you know, getting us engaged early meant that we could do that planning piece for him and basically give him the inputs to firstly size that all flash array, which which he or all flash arrays even, which he he kept on on premises, but they were considerably smaller than than what he what he would have uh, designed into originally. So roughly 30% of the size and basically 70% of that data went to the cloud. You know, the, the total cost of ownership that solution was reduced dramatically. Um, I guess the other one is. Um, uh, a different different customer entirely who had four petabytes of data in the cloud and one petabyte of data on premises. Again, all uh, unstructured data. Um, the, the cloud instance was AWS, so there's data in, in S3 and in frequent access. Um, again, we did the analysis there. Um, we roughly, it was about 60% of data in that instance was 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 greater than 12, 12 months or, or older that hadn't been accessed. So um, we saved that guy basically, well, that organization even $1.2 million over three years. Um, by ensuring that the, the, the correct data was sitting in the correct tier in, in AWS and uh, moving some data from that on-premises uh, uh, installation of storage out to the cloud. So, again, get, getting the right data into the right cost profile. So, uh, you know, the, the, there's some real, there's some gigantic cost savings to, to be attributed here if, if, if deployed correctly. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And as you said, Kevin, um, that's um, um, a big factor um, you know, we all know all data is not equal. Um, you know, when data is first created, it's very active, it's hot, it needs expensive storage and pre premium backups. Uh, but within months, data gets cold. You know, we're not using it as actively. And at that point, you want that data to still be accessible, but to consume as little resources as possible. Um, and so managing hot and cold data differently uh, is how our customers are able to save significantly uh, and still go to their modern flash environment, you know, leverage the cloud, but just leverage all of them for the right data at the right time. Um, and so we will show you all of this now in a demo. So I'm just going to switch and share my screen. Um, and uh, and um, hopefully you can see this now. Um, I what I'm showing you here is uh, Comprise, the Comprise console. Um, as I mentioned before, setting Comprise up is very simple. Um, in here, what we've done is we put a Comprise observer inside our data center, and then we came to this console, and we are connecting Comprise to different files, the storage environments that we have. So you can see in this example, I'm connected to uh, NetApp 8 mode cluster, um, connected to some Windows servers, and connected to some EMC Isilon. Um, so whatever uh, um, an NFS or SMB storage you have, you can just connect Comprise to it um, by just giving the IP address of the storage and Comprise finds the shares and you pick the ones you want to look at. Um, and that's it. Within a few minutes, you can have this set up um, and you can start getting analytics on your data. Um, once you set it up, uh, even on billions of files, within 15 minutes or so, Comprise starts giving you analytics. The first thing we're seeing here is that in this environment, we have a little over two petabytes of data. Uh, it's over, you know, uh, 25 million files. Um, and we can see exactly as Kevin mentioned, um, you know, a lot of this data is cold. Uh, so it's data that we, our users have created, but they're really not accessing that data regularly. Uh, so we can see here that 
but 13, 14% of this data hasn't been touched in over three years, uh, another 14% in over two years, uh, and about 28% hasn't been touched in over a year. So this entire 50, 60% of the data hasn't been touched in a year or more. And quite often, without analytics, you're probably keeping all that data on flash. Or you might be doing some storage tiering from the storage vendor, uh, and that might help a little with your storage costs, but your data is all locked in to that storage operating system. And your third-party applications, like your backup application and your antivirus applications, are still rehydrating the data. So we really want to take this cold data and we want to put it on less expensive storage, but we want to do it in a way where you still have control of the data, users can still see it from the original location, and third-party applications won't cause all that data to get rehydrated. So you want an intelligent way to archive that cold data. Uh, so that's one of the first use cases we help you with. Uh, you can see on the left here, you can actually define different policies inside Comprise, and you can have different policies for different departments and different groups of users. Um, so I'm going to have a policy maybe for my main um, uh, offices. I'm going to take data from my file storage, and I'm going to move it actually to uh, AWS when it, when it becomes cold. So anything over, let's say, six months old, if users haven't used it in six months, I want to move it in a bucket on AWS. And notice as I change this time frame, what happens to these savings numbers on the right? I don't know if you saw, but the cost savings jumped up. Uh, and it adjusted because Comprise is dynamically showing that based on this new policy, now about 63% of my data is actually going to move off my file servers into this bucket that I have in Amazon. And it's going to ha help me save uh, so much money. Uh, and all these savings that we're showing here, you can edit the cost model and you can put in your own numbers on what storage is costing you, how many backups you keep, you know, et cetera. And based on your own costs, Comprise will show you how much you can save. Uh, so just like Kevin mentioned that, uh, you know, a, a, um, a manufacturer in the UK saved uh, about 70% of their costs by taking their cold data to the cloud, you too can save a lot of the, your costs by knowing your own data, by understanding how much data is hot and cold, and by setting these kinds of policies where you can archive cold data uh, to the cloud. And the data that we archive is fully accessible. I'll show you in a minute. Users will still see it as though it's sitting on your local storage even though that data is in the cloud. Um, you can also set a policy to put a copy of data if you just want to use replication. Um, I wanted to point out that uh, AWS just announced something called Outpost. As a, if you don't want to put data entirely in the public cloud, either because you need faster data processing or because of security constraints, um, Amazon has this uh, a notion called Outposts where you could keep um, um, compute and data in your data center but still managed by Amazon. And um, Comprise actually now supports Amazon Outposts as well. So we can migrate data into Amazon Outposts, uh, into any uh, NetApp or any other storage that you're running in Outposts, and we can archive data from Outposts into the uh, public cloud, into your nearest AWS region. So you can set these different policies. You can look at your cost savings. You can also understand in more detail, you know, what is actually happening to your data. What kinds of data do you have? You know, who's using the data? Is it big files or small files? Which users, which groups uh, are accessing the data? Where does the data sit, et cetera? And the reason all these analytics are important is because this way, as an IT department, you can better understand exactly what your users are doing with data uh, as you're setting policies. So you don't have to fly blind 
with, uh, with you know, how much more flash do you need or how much cloud do you need or what data should you put in the cloud uh, because these analytics are helping you plan that and then you're able to actually manage the data movement systematically uh, through an environment like this. Um, Kevin, is there anything you wanted to point out on this? Um, I think from from a customer perspective, you know, obviously we get feedback regularly, and I think the the cost saving calculation where customers can actually input you know, their real storage costs, their primary storage costs, their archive storage costs, and Comprise calculates that kind of in real time when 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 mod, uh, sort of modifying the policy. That seems to be a real um, a real positive for pretty much every customer we speak to, and. Uh, yeah, it, it adds great value. You know, it's real data. It's not marketing. It, 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 it's nothing that, that that the customers can 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 worry about from that perspective. It's just cre creating real clear insight. So yeah, it, it yeah. does add a lot of value in the real world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, you know, there are a few questions that are coming in, and we will um, answer these uh, uh, questions um, you know as they come in. Uh, so. One of the questions was, can we use Comprise for our on-premise data and our cloud data? How would that work? Um, and the answer is yes, absolutely. You can use it both for your on-premise data. Here I'm showing you the file shares that you connect to in your data center. Um, but you can also connect Comprise uh, to your cloud accounts. Uh, so I'm showing you here that we're connecting Comprise to our Amazon account, our Azure account, and our Wasabi account, as well as to on-premise object stores, uh, EMC, ECS, and IBM Cloud Object Storage. So you can just pick whether it's a cloud storage or on-premise storage, as long as your storage is accessible through NFS, SMB, or S3, you can use Comprise to analyze that uh, data. Uh, when you're connecting out Comprise to the cloud, all you need to do is provide Comprise your cloud account, and Comprise finds all the sub accounts within it. And and so, uh, you know, Kevin mentioned one of the problems is a lot of companies, you know, users might just create DevOps accounts, and corporate IT doesn't have a good idea of how they're using the data. Um, and this is a great way to understand that you can actually just connect Comprise to your main corporate account it will find all the sub accounts within it and it shows you the same analytics i showed you for file data we also show you for all your data that's sitting on something like s3 uh, and you can see that here um, the data in these object stores and clouds a lot of that data is really cold uh, in fact here over 80 percent of the data hasn't been touched in over three months and we actually show you what your cost savings are based on your own AWS costs and Azure costs, uh, et cetera. So these cost savings are calculated looking at your own billing costs and looking at these policies and how much you can save. Um, so you can set different policies. You could say, well, move any data that hasn't been touched in these buckets in over three months, move it into Glacier Deep Archive or move it first into S3 IA and then Deep Archive, et cetera, and Comprise will manage that data for you. Um, there was another question that came in. How is this different from AWS S3 intelligent tiering? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so S, uh, for those of you who don't know what S3 intelligent tiering is, um, S3 has a class called intelligent tiering. Uh, and instead of picking S3 or S3 frequent access or Glacier or Deep Glacier, you can pick this intelligent tiering cost it, uh, class. It does have an additional cost to it because Amazon um, is actually looking at your data uh, and it's automatically tiering data for you. Um, the way this is different is it's very configurable. Um, just because some data is cold, may not mean you want to move it down to a lower class all the time. For example, you might want to say for your scientific research data, you know that that data, you know, once it's cold, it's a while before they use it again. So you want to be more aggressive. Anything over three months old, you want to move to glacier or deep glacier. 
um, but maybe your um, executive data that your uh, corporate finance and other groups are looking at, maybe only after 14 months you want to move it because you know that every 12 months they tend to do an annual audit. Uh, so you can set different policies and comprise for different data. It's fully analytics driven and comprise is managing data across file and object. So you don't only have to move object data. So S3 intelligent tiering is only within Amazon S3 and the S3 storage class. So you cannot move from EFS into S3 to Glacier using intelligent tiering, but with Comprise you can. So basically S3 intelligent tiering is okay if you don't know the access patterns of your data and you're willing to pay extra cost to Amazon to manage it for you. But if you really want to reduce your costs overall, you want to have the flexibility of creating different policies for different data, and you want a single way to manage your data with analytics, then that's what we are providing here. You know, And so a lot of our customers um, use Comprise on all their data, and you can put S3 Intelligent here as one of the classes, storage classes that we move data to if you want, uh, but you don't need to. So I hope I answered that question. Um, Kevin, there's also another question on, can I replicate data across two different clouds on an ongoing basis? Uh, also an excellent question. And yes, you absolutely can. So I'll show you here uh, how we're replicating between AWS and Wasabi um, as an example. Uh, so you literally can just set up a ongoing migration in Comprise. You can set up a source, a cloud, uh, a destination cloud, and you just run this job, and Comprise will continue to iterate. Um, and Comprise will continue to continuously, as things change in one cloud, copy it to the other cloud, uh, and this will, and you can, and it'll just run. Uh, so you can absolutely use it to do cloud-to-cloud -cloud replication as well as migration. And in fact, you can also use it to migrate data from your on-premise store into the cloud. So for example, if you want to migrate, in this example, I'm migrating from an Isilon into a NetApp, but you can migrate from an Isilon to EFS or Isilon to NetApp, Cloud Volume, Sontap, uh, et cetera. So you can run any migrations as well. So anything you want to do for your file data and object data, whether the data sits in the cloud or on-premise, uh, you can do that through a single uh, management interface uh, in Comprise. Um, Kevin, um, I wanted to very quickly just show the deep analytics and then show when we archive data what it looks like. Um, are you, uh, did you want to add anything on it or did you want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the analytics we provide and the global search and find uh, and what you see with customers, you know, are they finding things like, you know, tagging data useful? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's interesting, you know, obviously you know, we, we'll, we'll start with the customer at a certain point and then we sort of kind of move through the adoption of, of Comprise. Um, what we tend to show quite early when, when we're, when we're, kind of onboarding a customer is the depth of, of analytics that we can provide and um, it's actually been surprising from an adoption perspective how quickly customers can derive value from this particular element certainly around deep analytics you know, we're showing some insights that the guys have never seen before and yeah it certainly allows them to make some some informed decisions around what to do with their data which hasn't been necessarily available certainly from from standard vendor tooling from you know, NAS providers or wherever. So, yeah, we get some great feedback on this, and, and it, it does add some real tangible business value. Yeah. And, of course, you know, once you're done with all the analytics and you want to actually move the data, all you have to do is activate your plan, and Comprise actually starts moving data based on your policies. And I just wanted to very quickly show you, um, when you uh, archive data, for example, so if you said, hey, anything over a year old, move it to Amazon uh, S3 uh, from my on-premise NetApp, as an example, uh, here's what would happen to those files that we moved to Amazon. Um, I'm showing you a folder. I'm showing you some files have been archived, 
and some files are still local. Um, but if you look at it, you could just see all the files here, even though this file has been archived, uh, it's in the cloud. And I know it's been archived because it has a little arrow. I don't know if you're able to see it in the demo. Um, the resolution may, may not be that good. but And you can see that its lo logical file size uh, is, um, is um, um, uh, its physical size is smaller. Uh, it's showing up as a link. Uh, but this looks like a PDF file, just like a local file does. And all I have to do is double click it, and the file opens. It opened on my other window, so I have to move it uh, to the window I'm sharing. But the file opened. Um, and so this file is actually sitting as an object on Amazon S3. When I double click this, this link, it actually, uh, um, the NetApp got that request. It forwarded it, the request to Comprise. Comprise translated the S3 object back into a file, and the file opened. But you as a user don't have to know all of that. Uh, to you, you, you had files in your folder. You still have files in your folder. The fact that these cold files are sitting in the cloud is something you don't have to worry about. Uh, it's all fully accessible and transparent. Um, and, uh, and this is important for customers because as you adopt the cloud um, and as you adopt you know, uh, notions like object storage, you want your file-based applications to still work exactly as before. Um, Kevin, did you want to add anything on this? This is the last part of the demo. No, I think that, that, that completely summarizes things, Krishna. I think we've covered everything that we intended to cover. So, so thank you for doing that. And I uh, really appreciate the, uh, the answers as well. There's the questions, the answers to the questions. So that's great. Yeah, excellent. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can just go back to the, uh, to the slides. So just to summarize, we showed you how you can analyze both your cloud data and your on-premise data. It's any data that's sitting as files or objects we can look at. Uh, we showed you how you can optimize and uh, archive both your cloud data and your on-premise data, and how when you're archiving file data, even if it goes to an uh, S3 store or an object store, uh, it's fully accessible exactly as before. We showed you how you can run migrations, cloud-to-cloud -cloud replication, et cetera. And we showed you how all the data is getting indexed and tagged, so you can actually search and find it no matter where it goes. So I think uh, that uh, that about sums up the presentation. Kevin, if somebody wants to get started with us, uh, what should they do? Yeah, just just contact us. You know, drop a mail into info at comprise.com. We'll pick that up and get back to you straight away. You know, we can we can get we can get customers running on proof of concepts quite easily. Um, we've got some kind of sort of try, try and buy programs, both for our on-premises capability and our cloud capability. So yeah, we're, we're very agile at doing that. So you know, it, it's we, we can get you guys up and running as quick as you want, really. No, no problem at all. Yeah, I I know we're kind of uh, at the uh, uh, end of the 45 minutes. Um, I I think we answered most of the questions. Uh, Kevin, I think we're ready to wrap, right? Yep, absolutely. So, Krishna, thanks again for joining. Appreciate everyone. Thanks for joining the call. You know, you've all got busy, busy schedules, so we appreciate you taking the time out. And by all means, contact us, and we'll we'll get back to you quickly and and, and help you start to uh, to in, in, improve your data profiles as you move forward. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you all. Hope you stay safe.